Nigeria Uchena, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you thank on the show yeah. today. Yeah. Quite interesting how this story is evolving, how, you know, well, we, it hasn't been declared uh, a pandemic yet, but the WHO has said it now has pandemic potential, and we're seeing markets reeling across the board. Now, what we're hearing also is that OPEC is, is uh, may OPEC members may be leaning towards uh, bigger than expected or previously planned cuts before we had 600,000 barrels. Now, what we're hearing uh, is a cut of up to a million barrels per day. What are your thoughts? Um, first, I need to address the, the fact that you said um, WHO has not referred to it as a pandemic yet. I just think they're being politically correct because a pandemic situation um, is when you have such infectious diseases basically across board, and that's what we have with this uh, with this uh, viral um, infection. Um, with OPEC and their court, um, it's quite, quite um, very significant because now their hands are entirely tied. Mm. They need to do something about it. It's significant as regards to the downside pressure we're seeing in oil prices. The one million barrels we're talking about, that's just Saudi's pledge. Mm. That's just Saudi's pledge. They need to really cost significantly. Right now, um, Saudi Arabia export to China is falling in March by 500 thousand barrels per day and China in itself accounts for 10 percent of the total oil demand of the, um, the world really so you're looking at that kind of drop in demand that is going to send significant shock to the oil market and that's what we're seeing now and it's funny because Russia uh, has not has been silent has not you know so put forward its final position on the matter although we know that sometimes Russia does go with mm -hmm. you know, the plan on the table but Russia has just been silent what do you make of that um, as you said, Russia actually tries to stay indifferent, but um, um, as of today, um, oil being priced in, um, in rubble is actually dropping significantly, and we think based on that, um, the Russians will step in to also, um, should I say, um, um, comply with OPEC's demand as to cutting oil production. And we're seeing oil fall over about 25% since the beginning of the year. We're talking at $50 per barrel. Mm -hmm. I mean, some analysts have even told me that we shouldn't be surprised to see oil go as low as $47 per barrel. Now, that is obviously very bad news for a country like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We just, I mean, looking at the, the GDP numbers from last year and, and what we did as, as far as oil production was around somewhere around 2.1 million barrels, but they were able to ramp up production now. We're having this, and of course, implications also for our, our forex uh, reserves. I'm just wondering. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to if things continue, and, and as it's looking um, because uh, basically people, virologists or experts in this field, are just saying we are in the calm. We've not gotten to the storm yet. So if we are still going to move into that point of um, serious, should I say, spread of this virus, we expect downside pressure to continue to um, weigh in on oil market and in that regards we might be looking at maybe 45 40 and hmm. for us that is already recessionary now, let's go back quickly go back to china at the in the center of all this china is actually now reporting in you know, a lower numbers daily cases a new daily new cases and even deaths so you know it would appear that you know china may have you know weathered the storm and is now having a pullback but what we're hearing is that obviously it's going to spread to the rest of the world we don't know how far it's going to come at what point to come full circle peak and then begin to drop can oil survive that cycle? I think here is, and if you if you if you look at the market and if you look at um, risky assets and um, behavioral pattern, um, given the um, inception of this um, outbreak, you would realize that when China started to report those cases, um, we saw that downside pressure. Then it peaked because it looked like China had it in control. And last time I was here, I mentioned to you that it's really not about China now. China's risk has been priced in and discounted already in the market it's what happens outside of china and we can see that has been a like fresh risk we can see um infection um spreading across europe we even have in the country african continent we can see in south america too so this is uh, and the cdc for the american um, um should i say economy has come out to say that uh it will get really bad but don't panic. So when you see all of these countries and economies coming out to tell you that we're expecting the worst of the worst, then that in itself is what is keeping investors and market participants at bay. So we need to see that risk clear out first. And to me, I don't think, I don't know how much OPEC wants to court because the, the court per se might just give that relief rally. If we still have the spread continue to increase across board, 
um, we will still see further drop in oil prices. Now, some analysts foresee China taking extraordinary measures to help boost you know, economic growth, obviously, as a result of the, the impact of the effect of the virus. Do you think that China can quickly bounce back and then the whole world follow suit? Because at the end of the day, it's all about demand from China, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so the problem is we think this is just demand. We also have supply. Yeah. China is like the epicenter for in terms of the world, in terms of manufacturing hub. So there is production that is almost near zero right now. So it's not about just the demand. It is now the supply. So you have supply shock and demand shock. We exactly don't know exactly how we can get monetary stimulus and physical stimulus to continue to provide us support. This is a thing that's sort of holistic, and we need to see that the viral infection has been contained before we can start seeing any of these policies take effect. We're definitely keeping an eye on this one. Uchina, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Uchina Menes, Managing Partner at Blue FX Night.